All right, we're they can hear us. Cool. <laughs> we said that's so weird. Although the little weekly episode thing didn't um didn't show for some reason. The when HD I, image? Yeah. Oh, that's weird. When I um and I can't I don't remember what button it is to look at the other thing. <laughs> To launch the them. other thing. There's a button I can press and it lets me edit a screen while I'm displaying a different screen. Oh, I see. To try to see why. Yeah. But I don't know how to do it for some reason. Like, I can't. Okay. Can't find it at the moment. <laughs> ah. Can't find it. I think I found it, but I don't want to do it until. Until we're. Until we're like live, live with our faces live. Yeah, or else it'll restart the countdown. <laughs> <laughs> Why was like, there one and a half countdowns this time? <laughs> Why did uh, have, you know, did we, we have... want to show everybody has plenty of time to show up. Why did we have 17 and a half thingies? <laughs> Why was there 45 minutes of countdown? Nooms was playing with stuff again. 45 minutes of countdown. Hey, go, go big or go home, man. That is the Texas motto. Go big or go back to California. That's just that's how we roll. <sighs> so many people have been moving here from California. It's weird. And the funny What's thing up, is, on Twitch? like California is claiming it's not happening, and yet they're like, no one's actually leaving. People are showing up I all saw, the time from California and Texas. I saw a news just article. Here. Just moved here from California. I saw this news article and it was like, the great California migration is not actually happening. And I was like, really? Huh, that's interesting. I, <laughs> I don't even want to read the article because, eh, but, hmm. I, denial much? Well, it's one of those percentages. Let's look at percentages. Mm -hmm. The number of people that are leaving really isn't that big. It just feels no, like it, it's huge yeah. because it's, uh, feel the impact here. Yeah. Of all the people who are coming to Texas from other states, it feels like the majority of them are coming from California. And there's this other thing going on right now in New York. Uh, I think it was Morgan's, the CEO of Morgan Stanley, I think it was, um, released this thing about how uh, they are not going to continue. Uh, employees cannot expect to make New York rates if they're not working in New York. Because during the pandemic, you know, a lot of people went work from home, and then a lot of yeah. people moved. Because companies are like, we're going to do work from home as a benefit, you know, blah, blah, blah. And now some companies are like, okay, it's time to come back. And people are like, uh... <laughs> I moved to another state. Or I don't want to. And they're like, okay, yeah. well, we're not going to pay you the same. Because if you're not having... His argument was, if you're not having to pay to live in New York, why should I pay you like you live in New York? And it was like, I, I was like, hmm. Well, obviously we now know why the CEO of Stanley Morgan, how Stan, the CEO of 
of Stanley Morgan pays his employees, which is uh, bare minimum. Hey, they can see your face now. Yeah. I didn't do any countdown for you. They can see your face now. Cool. I've been cleaning my glasses for like the last three minutes. It was literally were... like one oh, second. Of all of them. But I was just like, hmm. <laughs> Okay, so officially, welcome to the live recording of Season 3, Episode 37 of the Brie Manifesto, Faith, Hope, and Love for the Modern Christian. If you're listening to this as a podcast that has been pre-recorded, then you are invited to come join us on Sunday evenings at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Most Sundays, we take a Sunday off here or there from time to time, but it's rare that we take a Sunday off. And we would love for you to come and watch live as we broadcast um, uh, Pastor Noom's and myself uh, recording this podcast. Uh, you can do that on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Used to have Periscope before they went belly up. Um, I'm not going to say the next sentence that I wanted to say. Ah, oh, what the heck. Hopefully Twitter will follow. Because, man, that is a dark place with lots of hurting people that want to hurt people. And so it's because the moderation is so low. The the, co the community guidelines allow for so much. It's kind of like it's bad, man. It's kind of like super, super publicized Reddit because um, Twitter allows pretty much anything. You I just... never go on to Twitter. The only stuff that shows up on Twitter from my stuff is stuff that's pushed there from other places as an automatic push. I never go to Twitter to post. Yeah. I never go to Twitter to read. I I got disgusted by Twitter a very long time ago. And um, I think uh, Matt Smith's doctor said it best when he said, Twitter. <laughs> so. <laughs> Which I updated my pops and one of them. Oh, wrong, wrong side. We isn't out of post. I barely see that, yeah. I know. I tried to install some nice lighting. Oh, there you go. Now I can see it. And I thought it was going to work, and it doesn't, and shows up really, really bad in stream. And then I tried so to mess with, your, with it. With your red lights off, I can actually see the axe now. Which makes no sense, because the whole reason why we did it was because you couldn't see it two weeks ago. When I so tried what to it show looks it. like right now is that you painted the shape of an axe yeah. in Vanta Black 2.0 onto the desk. That's what it looks like. That it is looks definitely amazing. not the case. Hey, <laughs> you want to see how fast we can get banned off YouTube? Um, Pretty quick. If you keep swinging that around. Sorry. I just thought about that. <laughs> One of my favorite channels on YouTube actually got demonetized this week. And the, uh, oh, no. the two people that run the channel were um, crying. Effectively, I bet. Um, because it's such, a, it's such a minefield trying to monetize your YouTube, and then these companies, it they do, either don't make it clear enough, or people just don't think to hire a lawyer to read the community guidelines to explain to them. Well, that's what the crazy is thing. Isn't acceptable. This particular, so like this particular channel is so big that they actually get approval from YouTube. Before anything's posted. Huh. So they go through an approval approval process to post. So every video, they submit it, they wait, and then it gets approved. And that's after the editors that they have, um, that they've hired, actually go in and put extra stuff and, you know, the whole nine. And um, so all of their videos are approved by YouTube. And then someone went in and demonetized in one day three-fourths of their backlog, and they post multiple videos a day. And it, um, they've made it their entire, you know, social media yeah. is their entire career. Um, it's a, it's a, uh, I don't even think they're fiancés. It's MRX Play, uh, M, MRX Plays, and he does streaming and she does streaming and then they have a channel together where they do stuff and they're both on twitch and you know they're 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 funny and um 
it's it's so it was so heartbreaking because I saw like the thumbnail. You know, they do the clickbait thumbnails. It's one of the things they're known for, and so you're like, ooh, what's and and I was like, wait, why is she crying? Oh. That's not a fun clickbait thumbnail. Mm-mm. Usually it's like something that's borderline inappropriate with like a thing over it, so that way it's not not inappropriate. Like you know, <laughs> and you're like, all right. Um, and, and they were just on there crying because, um, angry, angry and crying and, you know, just everything because their entire channel and they actually showed screenshots of it. And it was like, just do, 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 do all of them demonetized. And then there'd be one that wasn't, and then all of them, and then one that wasn't for some reason. And it's just like, (sighs) and all of them had been approved gone through the approval it's just social media and making a career out of it is rough and you know every now and then i think about it i'm like i think i could do that i think we could i think i you know and then i see stuff like that and i'm like i don't wanna (laughs) yeah i'll stick to my day job like as a rug pulled out from underneath you like that is and and no no logic behind it is the yeah. other frustrating thing. You know, there's no um, – it was like I was talking to another friend of mine who's working on a game, and he's like, and we're going to have – it's a streamer-based game. And, and I was like, oh, that's great. That sounds great. And he's like, and we're going to have – you know, one of the aspects is you can play music because people like to play. And I was like, what kind? And it's like, oh, well, it's DRM-free, you know – licensed and allow and you're like well just so you know twitch keeps popping people for that still because it's close enough to a regular song that their yeah. algorithm picks it up and pops them uh cyberpunk 2077 went through that where they had to there was a setting that was like monetized or demonetized um music and then people were yeah. still getting popped for having music and it's like so the world of social media is um a minefield to say the least when you're trying to make a um anything out of it right when you're trying to make money off of it (laughs) or have people find your stuff either way you know yeah It's hard enough to get people to find your stuff. Yeah, and that's the other thing. If if your if your stuff is not mon- the monetized stuff, of course, gets recommended more often than the demonetized stuff. So, you know. Anyway, how was your week, Pastor Bill? How, you're supposed to say about your week first. Otherwise, we get all off track. And I, I just did a 13 it. minute diatribe on something completely different. Do I really have to? Uh huh. How was your week, Pastor Nimps? Well, my best friend is an A dollar dollar hole. So, um, A dollar dollar. Um, A dollar dollar, A dollar dollar, A dollar dollar, A dollar dollar, A. See, he claims it, folks. You all saw it and heard it. Something. Anyway, um, no, it was pretty good. Uh, busy. I changed my office around a little bit. Um, like I said, I refreshed the behind me. I installed lights that Let's don't count actually the work. Screens. Let's count you know. You want to you want to play don't count the screens. Okay. Quadro, so draw. So and then Cinco. and then I did this. Cinco screens. And and it just it I don't I hate it. <laughs> I don't like it at all. Is there a is there I mean cuz cuz the podcast version they can't hear what you're saying, but it's this string of red lights. Yep. Over top of your pops behind you. Yep. And over top of your new axe that you bought, mm-hmm. um, is there a lip on that nope. shelf under no. that shelf that you could put it under to hide the lights? No, there's not. Uh-huh. Um, okay. And so it's it's all good. It's just it's one of those things where and you know those little LED lights are like seven bucks, so it's not like I've blown a bunch of money on it or something. It's just frustrating when you're like, this would be nice, and then you put it on, and you're like, that looks terrible. But yes, Ooh. I do now have so I have my two screens for. My personal computer and my camera in the middle. Hi. Mm-hmm. 
and then I have my main computer, mm -hmm. and then I have work screen one, which is the actual laptop, which you guys can't see, and then screen two, and then screen three, which you guys can see, and then my whiteboard up above it. And then Tina's desk is still there because we haven't moved it yet. Um, but, yeah, I rotate it around my pops, though. Um, I like to do that every now and then. Um, I got some of the Skyrim ones back out. The the White Run Guard. Um, which, if you don't know, because you don't know, uh, a fun thing about him is there's a line in the game where every time you you know you talk to the guards, there's random things they say, right? One of the things is, I have an I took an arrow to the knee, right? And it, they say it constantly, and it's just it gets to a point where you're like, I'm going to put an arrow in your knee, like it, you're just annoying. And the pop actually has an arrow in his knee. Nice. And so it's like, ha ha, ha nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. So my is good. Um. I caught the uh, season finale of Loki, season one Loki finale. It was fantastic. Um, no spoilers, but it was visually stunning. Um, I highly recommend everyone um, go see the Loki series on Disney+. Plus. That's another thing that I hate social media for, but that's beside the point. Oh, because of spoilers? Well, I love the um, spoiler alert, but while they're doing spoiler alert, the tags on the bottom and the text behind them – clearly yeah. spoils it and you're like it doesn't it doesn't help you, yeah you you've already spoiled it for me now so i know who the bad guy is because your cloth played as him and then you say spoiler alert as opposed to just cosplaying as the guy and if you get it you get it but now man anyway. even that you, you went a little far there. No, I didn't. After I just said, no spoilers. I didn't go any far. I said there's a main bad guy. What does that tell anybody? There's always a main bad guy. Sometimes there's a main bad girl. I'm using the gender-inclusive guy, not the oh, actual you mean like guy. The, the, the guy named Guy guy Fox, who, Fox who blew up the – or right. tried to blow up Parliament. Like, like, I don't actually know who the guy is. I just know that there is a guy, I guess. Okay. But let's be honest, it's Marvel, so knowing there's a knowing guy... The, doesn't, knowing the list of bad guys from Marvel doesn't really help you. Doesn't so help you long. at all. Like, And especially when you're talking about something like Loki, because it's one of those where it's like, who hasn't he made mad? Like... Anyone. Anyone. H Puff says you could have said the, a bad y'all. Um, Roxanne on YouTube says you could have said the big bad. I hate the term the big um, bad. H Puff also says bad person or bad them. You didn't have to say bad guy. I you just said enough. bad guy. <laughs> I don't I even. Th I. Yeah, I said bad guy because <laughs> the person I was complaining about was a guy. Yeah. Okay. I don't even, I don't even okay. know if the character okay. is, okay. to be honest. <laughs> so, um they're coming out with pops that are based off the Loki series. Um and if you don't want spoilers, then don't go look up the pops. No. Cuz good lord. Um but there is one pop in particular that I want, but I can't tell you which one it is because mm. just saying the name of the pop would be a spoiler and I don't want to spoil the adventure for anybody that is going to go watch the Loki series. Um but there will be a season two, which is fantastic. Um, the uh, final scene, you know, they, they did a they did an extra scene at the mid credits on the last episode, and it was a file folder and a hand came down and put a stamp, and then when the stamp came off, it was a red stamp that said Loki will return for season two, hmm. which was how they confirmed that there'd be a season two. That's a nice way of confirming it. Yeah. Um, so that was fun. Um, let's see. We had some birthdays this week. Um, my mother-in-law, um, her husband, my, my father-in-law, um, my son, um, my wife, all of their birthdays were this week. So we celebrated all of that. Um, so that was fun. And we had a, 
big party yesterday where we dressed up as characters from um, the show Gravity Falls. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. It was so much fun. I dressed up as Seuss. I put a big question mark and black duct tape on my shirt. And I talked in a Seuss voice all day. Um, except for when I was on the phone with Nooms, I used my normal voice for that. But mm, thank you. The rest of the day, when I was at the party, I was using my Seuss voice, which I I had to not get re- get mad at somebody, but I got real mad at somebody that was at the party with you because I heard them twice call you Zeus, <laughs> and I was like, <sighs> instead of Seuss. <laughs> I can't like, tell people. No, my name, my name is Seuss. It's short for for Hey Seuss. It's Seuss. It was. It was. It's what? It was. <sighs> that is a show that I really wish they had made more of. Because right? it ends well, but there's always next summer. Right. Like. You they could have gone another summer. You you could have easily gone back. I want Dipper and they as an adult. So much into yeah. one summer, like so much. Um, so yeah. But it was funny because uh, the girls were watching it. The, the girls are always watching it at some point. Um, it's kind of one of their go-to shows. But they were watching it at some point, and it's really funny hearing some of the voices from other shows that the mm. Ecclesian House does not. Um, recommend um but comes on in about two hours um and uh on a human level we recommend them for people who have strong spiritual beliefs that allow them (laughs) to watch and interact with things like that yes as a church we we recommend those that are weak of spirit yes and so are easily beset to avoid certain things yes i do not recommend in any way, people watch shows that are inappropriate, that they cannot handle, um, because they are spiritually not at a point where they can. But for well, those of you the that rest are of us, to the podcast, um, Pastor Nooms is currently holding up a pop of Rick and Morty where Rick is a bear. No, it's a clone. Well, it's a he's a Teddy Rick. He's a wasn't that the the Rick from another? It uh, is uh, another dimension. So I keep some of my pops in my room. <laughs> Mr. Poopy Butthole is one of them. Um, HPS Phoenix asked where my Mr. Poopy Butthole pop is, and he stays in my room just because it doesn't need to be behind me because there's only so many times you can say Mr. Poopy Butthole, and I think we are already past the um, allowable times. So... I love that show. Oh, so what I was going to say about that show, you mentioned the Loki ending, getting moving thing. So they've done something with Adult Swim where at the end of each episode on Adult Swim, they actually do like a 45 second, minute and a half, someone that was instrumental in that particular episode talks about the episode so it's always the main creator and then it's one of the writers or one of the animators or somebody else and they do like this really short and they have been so good yeah because rick and morty always does the ending credit scene um but then this little extra snippet of i can't believe we did this um why did we do that? Um, Dan came to us and said, this is where the episode's going to end. And we all went, huh? Um, <laughs> how are we going to get there? And he went mm, and walked out of the room. So <laughs> we wrote it, you know, so it's just, it's just kind of, you know, it's been fun seeing some of those because you get that little bit of a, not like the DS nine the other day where, um, the extra credits came up and uh, while me and Pastor Bill were watching it and it was like two hour behind the scenes we're like no (laughs) 
It is 11.45 at night. Yeah. We are not watching a like, two hours. If this, was, if this was 10 minutes, cool. I'm not sitting here for two hours and listening to them talk about DS9 Season 1. Well, and I think it's an interesting thought looking at the past to now. I thought that was a good analogy of where we've come from. You know, DVD box sets with, you know hundreds of credit hours and a thousand extra this and people are like no i need 45 seconds at the end of every episode <laughs> like and so it's interesting to see how the world Space has changed that stuff out yeah no one wants to sit for two hours and hear you talk about it well i won't say that nobody does but the only making of you know insight whatever thing that i feel like sat all the way through the whole thing is the one that came with the um, A Knight's Tale um, with Heath Ledger. Okay. Yeah. Why? Because that movie's awesome. I I agree. Okay. Yeah. That's, Maybe um... that's why I don't watch any other ones anymore. That might be. Anyway. Um, so now it's time for Pastor Nooms' favorite segment. And since we're on an odd numbered episode, we pull a card from my deck instead of the new deck that, or that just because the lovely ladies at the holding household got for us. Or just because last week we did one of mine, you know, whichever way you want to look at it. All right, pod decks, let's go. It's better be valid. Yeah, pod decks. It's better be valid. Pod decks is awesome. Um, uh, okay. I won't go that far. We've had some duds. You done? No. I'll be done at some point when we're dead. When we're dead. <laughs> Continue. Okay. What are you most excited about right now? And we already answered that question, so we can move on. How do we answer um, that question? We were talking about your week and my week and things. Okay. What are we? What are you most excited about right now, bud? Bud, I felt I felt Canadian for a second there. That was that was gross. Um, I think the thing I'm most excited about is your computer coming in soon. They are actually building it right now. I yeah, I got an email this week that finally six business weeks after we ordered it. Who talks that way? Who says foreign companies business weeks? Anyway, six business weeks after we ordered it, uh, I finally got the notification that they are collecting the pieces from throughout the warehouse and assembling my computer that we ordered mm -hmm. um, that will go right down there on my left hand side and stick out probably five, six inches um, from where the desk ends here. That's the story of my day, Mr. Groggy. I've been distracted for the last two days by Minecraft, so don't feel bad. Mr. Groggy joins us on Twitch and he says, I'm late! He got distracted by Minecraft. Oh. Yeah, just, just break your wall. Why not? No, it was, my cane was hanging there and it... Mm. So I don't normally sit all the way over here when I'm doing stuff, um, and so I'm off to the far right. Normally I'm, I'm, you know, I'm over here-ish, more, you know, at my desk. Um, but for the purposes of this video recording, I'm over here, and then so that I leave space for Pastor Nooms to be over here on my left-hand side, Hello. chilling below the Ecclesian House logo. I love what I'm doing with my hands, just like kind of guessing where things are since I can't actually see the screen. <laughs> I am here, and the logo's up there. See? <laughs> there you go. You are there, and the logo's above you. Not above you, above me. No, not above me. What's above me is my free hug shirt. No, it's to the... Mm. Uh, it's a little leftish of me. My leftish, not your leftish. Oh, no, that's why I went, hmm, because it was just easier. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun just uh, uh, transcribing that. It's right? over in the hmm. 
It's <laughs> over the hmm corner of your screen. Hmm. But right. no, I'm very excited about that because... Oh yeah, we didn't finish answering the We are going to start streaming more individually together playing games. Um, individually together. Yes. <laughs> um, and it's going to be fun because I have a ton of games that I've played for years or games that I've thoroughly enjoyed and you've watched part of and now we'll get to go at it and we're going to have to be very careful with how we do this because um, we, we there's a lot to get through there's 10 years of games you haven't played to get through and it's going to be a minute um so but we're both storyline people so it's going to work out great because we're actually going to take the time on games that have storylines to get the storylines instead of just blowing right past them like you were talking about in arc there's all the storyline stuff and the people you've been playing with uh it's been all about let's build this let's build this let's achieve this let's achieve this let's move on and there's so much story that we can go back and just well and appreciate. and there were years of me being at Pizza Hut. The main thing about that one is there were years that I missed. And so like they've played a lot more than I have. And yeah. so for them they can get to a certain point real quick and I'm like I I have stone um and so <laughs> it's um yeah. H. Puff says, The Chronicles of Pastor Bill. I'm concerned. Sorry. Good? As some burping that was going on, yeah, I was don't, trying to keep it as don't do quiet that. as possible. Don't do that, it's rude. Alright, so this week... Oh, I didn't talk about what I was excited about. You did I'm excited about... I'm sure there's something. A new computer's coming in. Haha, uh -huh, stole that one. Try again. It's exciting. Now, um, I've got some a side project that I've that I has been rolling around in my head for a long time, and I'm um, I've started working on that, and I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I was I was uh giving Gerg a run through of what the main outline of the story is and, and he was like dude you sound like somebody who saw a movie or discovered a new show and you're really excited to tell me about it because you think I should watch it and I'm like well I kind of am <laughs> and and it's you know it's a story I'm working on but it's a it's a science fiction thing and I'll be using a pseudonym and instead of putting the name my name on it it'll be a, a pseudonym uh, that I won't share here because I want to keep those separate. Yeah, that would kind of defeat the purpose of having a... I would defeat the purpose of having a pseudonym. Um, so I won't tell you anything about the story or what my pseudonym is going to be because that would defeat the purpose. But I'm pretty excited about that. Um, and hopefully that will... Um... Yeah, I don't make any money. So I'm hoping that'll, I can make some money because I've tried applying to jobs, lots and lots and lots of jobs and gotten lots and lots and lots of <sighs> ghostings and lots of rejections and uh, four interviews I've had over the last six years. Um... Two of them were legitimate, and I still didn't get the job, and the rest of them were those, yeah, we're calling ourselves a marketing company, but we really just want you to go stand at a retail store and harass people to try to get them to buy our products. Which still doesn't help because you can't stand for any amount yeah, of time. exactly. Which is the... I, I need a sitting job. I need an office job. I need something I can... Because I, I can't. I can't. Yeah. When I go to the store, I have to use one of those little carts. I can't. When I go to cook, I have to use a, a you know, a chair in the kitchen, and so, um, 
So yeah, there's that. Um, and looking for a job is, yeah. H Puff on Twitch says looking for work is horrible. And Mr. Groggy says yes. And and then there's this whole thing that you see about jobs that are posted, people apply to them, and then they get rejected. And then within the next week, the same job gets reposted because the government is subsidizing companies who are looking for work. But if they fill that work, then they won't get the subsidy anymore. And so there's this thing that companies are doing where they post a job and then reject all the applicants for not being qualified and then reposting the job with never actually intending to fill it because they're receiving major subsidies from the government um, to be looking for filling positions. Hmm. So. That's no fun. That's no fun. Now uh, we went from excited to bummer. And tonight's topic. We are, yes, Mr. Groggy said it. We are, it is called In the Name. We are talking about in the name and the verse that we brought that I, I used for the um, the picture that for some reason I no longer have pulled up is from a story that Pastor Nooms really likes um, and he can tell the story if he wants if not that's fine too uh, it's from Acts chapter 19 and the verse is, cha- is verse 15 I'm going to pull it up in my CSB because I don't know something about the way the King James phrases this particular one. I'm not happy with. So it says the evil spirit answered them. I know Jesus and I recognize Paul, but who are you? Um, and do you want to tell the story or should I just summarize from the I, text? I mean, I do love this story. I know you do. So, that's why I offered to let you. There were these brothers, and this is going to be the the not the CSB version, but the this is going to be the Numsiums version. The, the Numsiums version. Version. So there were these brothers, <laughs> and they decided that you know they watched Paul and they watched other people casting out demons and and doing miracles, and they were like, man, we can make some money. So they were like, let's do it. So they go out. And they, they start casting out some low-level demons from people, and they start, you know, they create this business idea of, hey, we're going to cast out some demons. And then um, <laughs> they were not using adequate um, faith. They were not using um, – they were not Christians relying on Jesus. They were just – they had done this as a business proposition. And – um so they get to uh, this particular house, <laughs> and they're like, in the name of the Jesus of Paul, which, ugh, um, to begin with, um, and then they're like, you know, get out. And the demon in the person turns around and goes, <laughs> uh, I, I, I know Jesus. I know who that is. I know. I even know Paul. Who are you? And then proceeds to throw them through the door of the building they were at into the street because he was having none of it. <laughs> well, it because I don't know if it was a male demon. That was rude. It just throws it right out the window and is like, come again. Um, And it's such a interesting thing to see. Um, because so often, um, people always pull the, well, I know so-and-so and like, you know, it's one of those where it's like, and, and they did like the, the worst way of doing it too. It's like, my uncle knows a guy who runs this place. And he said, you know, it wasn't even like a valid, like. You don't know the one who gives you power. You've claimed a guy that you knew because you heard of him who uses the power of the guy to go do it. And it's, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's a fun one because 
I love seeing people get get what's coming to them, and they got it right through the door. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Now Bill will tell you the theological part about it. <laughs> um, yeah. So I one of the one of the details that um always gets me is that when they when they when they left they left beat up and naked and so it's like okay <laughs> yeah how bad um, did you mess up yeah give me one second here fair Okay, so I, the Bible gives a name for who these people are, right? Um, they're called the sons of Sceva, mm -hmm. which is interesting. I don't think that's actually their name. I think that is a um, – I think that's an inside joke amongst the believers of – the followers of the way to call them Sceva because this word Sceva – um, has two meanings. One of those meanings is mind reader. Okay, and if you if you if you think about the region where they're living in and everything that's going on in that region, um, this this wouldn't be um, a compliment or a, an accolade to call someone a mind reader is is basically, you know, you're a charlatan, you're a hack, you're a goof. Um, you know, you're you're just trying to make money off of people, and the other definition is much more an insult. Uh, wouldn't be an insult now, but it is an insult then. And the definition is left-handed, um, which is the one that Strong's uses. Yeah, heavily is the heavily. <laughs> there, left... and at the time, that was a incredible insult. To call someone left-handed, um, you got to think about. <laughs> I'll say it because you're nicer. Someone... So, you 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 shake hands with your right hand. You eat with your right hand. Toilet paper wasn't didn't exist yet, so God gave you a left hand. So. So if you're left-handed, then you're. Yeah. Roxanne says poop shoveler. <laughs> poop shoveler. They were poop shovelers in their handedness. It just it, it's all kinds of, of an insult um, in the day. Nowadays, someone can be left handed. That's not a big deal. That's not an insult. Uh, we have modern contrivances. We have mo modern facilities where it doesn't matter if your dominant hand is right hand or left hand. But in the day. To call someone a skiva, um, <laughs> that that's an insult. Which and so that's why I'm thinking that's not actually their name. Which they because, didn't call them a skiva even. They went one step uh, farther. Son of a <laughs> you aren't even good enough to be called left-handed. You are just the son of someone who was left. Like it's a it's an extra level. Your mother was a hamster. You're like, and your father smelt of elderberries. It's it's not even like I was having this discussion with Biggs and um my mom the other day. And Jesus did the same thing. He got to a point where he was tired of just calling people hypocrites mm -hmm. and just started making stuff up. <laughs> you like, whitewash tombs. Like, just so, like, it's almost like, you know. Did you explain that to me, Jesus? It's it's getting written down, and the guy's like, <laughs> scratch that out, rewrite it. That one's better. And then just keeps going. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's, you know, uh, it's just humorous, some of those <laughs> aspects, when you look at them. For sure. Okay. So what they did here is they went in and they said, in the name of the Jesus that 
Paul preaches. Mm -hmm. Or at least that's how we translate that into our modern English. Okay? Now, if we go back to the original and we look at the words that are used there, because over time we've collapsed a lot of concepts together and we've taken things that in the original context of a Greek sentence or the original context of a Hebrew sentence or the original context of a culture, when you use a certain word, it makes sense to mean a certain thing, even though it can have a dual meaning, mm -hmm. right? And this is one of those words, this word um, onoma, onoma, which is 100% of the time translated as the word as the word name right mm -hmm. it is translated as the word name except it doesn't just mean name it means name it means called so nickname it means surname it means named as in you got your name changed and so now you are named it also means authority it also means character and so in this context when we read this what they would have been saying is by the authority of the Jesus that Paul preaches mm -hmm. right not necessarily the word name but by the authority now wait a second Paul is out there operating in in that authority uh -huh. of that name. He's not walking around going, in the name of Jesus, be healed. No. He is in the authority of someone who is a co-heir with Christ saying, be healed. Whoa, Paul, how do you have that ability? Well, that's not me. It's him that I'm in a relationship with, and by that relationship, I move in this authority. And so when we go back and we read certain places in Scripture where it says, in the name of, right? And so we, for instance, there is no other name by which man should be saved. What name? Yeah. If the translation there is name, what name? The modern name Jesus? The old English name Eusis? The Greek... Um, Zeus, which means son of Zeus. Uh, the Hebrew, Yeshua, the, the, the followers of the way began to call him because they didn't want to call him the son of Zeus and they thought that was heretical and, and there's this whole divide where people were like, no, we have to call him that because if the Romans are walking by and they hear us calling him anything else, calling him by his real name, you know, calling him the Messiah, then they're going to kill us. So we got to use this name that they posted above him in ridicule, we have to call him that. Otherwise, they're going to kill us. And there's other people going, but we don't have to call him that. Why don't we just call him a word that describes what he is? Yeshua, which in English would be pronounced Joshua. Nobody calls him Joshua, even <laughs> though that's the way it was written several times in the scriptures. But even that's not his real name. Right? The prophecies in Isaiah say they would name him Emmanuel. And then you get to, to Luke, and the angel tells Mary to name him. And then if you look in every Bible you've got, the Jesus that it says is in all caps. And this is an author's note to let you know they mistranslated what was being said here out of respect for the holiness of the name being spoken by the angel. They mistranslated it into a commonly accepted nickname. That's not actually what the angel said. Yeah, because in several... Um, in the Jewish culture, um, a lot of... Pre will not write... Messianic Jews, they won't write the full name. There are a lot of people who won't. 
And then there's they'll never use an O. Yeah, and then they don't it's disrespectful. They don't use. Uh, they don't write all of Jehovah's name either. Right. When referring to God, because it's disrespectful they, to write it if wrong. If they do have to write it, they will take the pen or the quill or whatever they're using, and after they've written the name of the Lord, they will break it and put it in the fire, because that pen has now touched the name of God and nothing else should be written with that device and they go get a new one yeah. right so I mean yeah. it's, it's definitely it, it's definitely something that's been translated for so long as name but more it is the authority and it's kind of like um, I heard a preacher say it one time where it's like when you go in somewhere and you're like hey I need to get a loan and they're like, well, I don't know who you are. Well, my father's this person. Oh, okay, cool. Here's a loan. You know, because it's someone else's. You're borrowing someone's authority. You're not borrowing their name because their name doesn't mean anything. It's the authority. And you're certainly not becoming them. Right. As I've seen some preachers preaching from the pulpit uh, in 2021 calling themselves God Almighty um, because they are co-heirs with Christ and equal to Christ and Christ is God and therefore they are God and all Christians are God Almighty. Hmm. That's um that's some steps. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to turn to Matthew chapter 28, okay? And um short chapter Matthew chapter 28? Yeah. It is kind of a short chapter, isn't it? Usually uh, I have to do more scrolling. <laughs> so I was like, oh, hey. Matthew chapter 28. We're going to start in verse 18. I'll take my Bible off of my little holder here. Um, it says, Jesus came near and said to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now, we've, we've talked extensively about what kind of baptism Jesus was talking about here. And we brought up the what John talks about, that John baptized with water, Jesus came to baptize with the Holy Spirit, not with water. So therefore, anytime Jesus says, go baptize, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. He's not talking about water. Even Jesus himself never baptized anyone. If you go and you, you look, any times where baptism is happening around Jesus, it always makes note that Jesus was off resting on the shore while the disciples were doing the baptizing, the water baptizing. Um, and then Paul goes on, to, I didn't baptize anybody. Well, maybe a couple of members of the household of Stephanus, but I can't really remember if I did or not. You'd think if water baptism was that big of a deal, Paul would remember uh, whether or not he'd baptized two people in the household of Stephanus, right? Maybe. Right. So, but, but the topic of tonight is in the name. Mm -hmm. So he says, baptizing him in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. And so what do people do when they're, for instance, water baptizing? I baptize you in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. Except that's not what it says. It says it's the word authority. Baptize them in the authority of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So when you're leading someone into baptism, whether it's water baptism or, or baptism of the Holy Spirit, because I'm not anti-water baptism. I, I'm very much your relationship with God. It's your relationship with God. If you study out water baptism and you feel like that's a good outward sign for you um, to show that you've turned your heart over to the Lord, then absolutely you should get water baptized. Um, so I'm not anti-water baptism. I'm anti-requiring it as part of salvation because then that's not salvation anymore. You've now created a law and made salvation of no 
effort, no effect. Um, Paul's words there. So when we go back to the original Greek, even he uses the same word here again. Um, in the name of the father, it's that onoma. It's in the authority of the father of, of uh, the son and the Holy spirit. You move in that authority mm -hmm. when you're, when you're baptizing someone in this case, baptizing them into the Holy spirit, baptizing them into the law of the spirit, which is salvation. Right. But then he also says, um, where was it? And Jesus came and all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth there in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, right? All authority has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples, uh, baptizing them in the authority of, so all authority has been given to him. And did he use the word authority in verse 18? Well, the, the word that was used in um, verse 18 to verse 28, that then is translated as authority in the CSB and power in the King James is um, technically both power and authority. Uh, let's just read what Strong, uh, Mr. Strong had to say about it. He says, um, in the sense of ability, privilege, that is suggest su subjectively force, capacity, competency, freedom, or objectively mastery. Concretely, magistrate, superhuman, potentate, token of control, it is delegated influence, authority, jurisdiction, liberty, power, right, strength. Now, the word itself is exousia. Exousia. Does that sound like a, an English word that you know? No. Exude. Mm. Exude. When you exude something, it comes naturally to you because it is part of who you are. He says, all authority has been given to me. So I exude this authority, this power, this liberty, this, this, this right. It is my strength. I have competency here. I have the freedom to do it. And I am using that and telling you to go out and do the same. Uh -huh. He is empowering them, not giving them a script, which so many have gone and just used it as a script. Instead of going out and going, well, I move in the authority of. So I've seen so many people that they talk about demons, demons here, and demons there, and we just have to resist the demons. And in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, okay, okay, your little demons are running around laughing at you. No, but I used the name of Jesus. Well, you, you definitely spoke some words to him. You, you definitely did. You definitely and, spoke some words, some modern English words, and and the aspect is it's it's not that's what so many people get so incorrect in a lot of times is it's not the words that have the power it's the authority behind the words so yes there are people and by the way the reason I'm chuckling for those who can actually see my face is anytime Pastor Bill wants to get um to call out people that are um, have different beliefs he <laughs> typically goes towards the southern oh, what I southern what I would Baptist call accent. a southern Baptist accent for yeah. people that are the leaders of churches in the small podunk town 
where he had to grow up in. Um, and it, it, it just makes me giggle because it's, it's painful to hear because I've heard it too many times. Like the guy from the video that I watched a couple of weeks ago who was talking about, um, what was he saying? Um, he was talking about they put in that evil mermaid shop down the street where you can get the devil's coffee. And they took away my some restaurant that he loves. They tore down the restaurant that I used to eat at. So they, they could put in that mermaid worshiping devil coffee shop. And it is this thick southern bat like this was the whole his whole sermon was all about they tore down the restaurant he used to like to go to and put in a Starbucks and how that was evil and they shouldn't be getting coffee from that mermaid worshiping devil coffee shop. And and so what I was saying, which is Sadly, people have that belief. Um, there are so many people who they they focus on the wrong part of this. There are people who walk in that authority and they use the name as well. And it's accurate because they're walking in the authority. So we're not talking about that. Let's be clear. We're not we're not saying anyone who's ever baptized someone like this as Bill or anyone who's ever preached a message like this. We're not trying to, to go that route. But what we're trying to say is the important part is the authority, not just the name. There was a there's a couple of um, vampiristic uh movies and shows and and i like fantasy so it happens and every now and then the you power of christ compels you the, <laughs> does it does it um when you go compels after me to dates when you yeah. go after someone without that power there's you a problem like a son of skiva yeah and and jesus talks about it in another place as well um that you know, you have to have the authority. The You have to have prayed this out. You have to make sure you have that spiritual gifting from God. You have to – you shouldn't be out just claiming authority because you think you can when you aren't actually walking in it. Just claiming the authority is a good way to get yourself in trouble. You can pick up a cross and shove it in a vampire's face. Unless you have the faith behind it, um, it's going to eat you. Um, <laughs> and and I watching the movie will enjoy it because hypocrites it yeah. get bit. Um, and so it's just, it's just that aspect of the authority is what is so important, and that's what I want to make sure is clear because sometimes Billiam is um, uh, more passionate about certain aspects and less um, cut and dry. And so I want to make sure that that is clear. <laughs> Did I compare your emotional and my logic accurately there? I don't know. Okay. I'm apparently the emotional in that sentence, so that's a new one on me. Um, uh, okay, wait, so wait, we're... wait, wait. Excuse me? <laughs> You're going to actually... <laughs> I knew you weren't going to let me get away with that. Like, you're going to actually try to go... you comparing me and you... Mm, you can go ahead and end for tonight. We good. We can 30-second right, so buffer. We're 34. So we're a little over. So, um, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, I want to leave you guys with just a, a parting thought. Um, and it is... Um, Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 21, it says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But don't... Oh, hey, uh, Bill. Wait. Yeah? Okay, try try again. You, you cut out during the actual reading part. I haven't started reading yet. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um... 
No, I guess I have started reading. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so let's pick back up in verse 22, because that's when it starts getting good. Uh, On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name, drive out demons in your name, and do many miracles in your name? And then I will announce to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you lawbreakers. This is that same word mm-hmm. on Oma that can be translated as name, but it can also be translated as authority. In this context, when you're reading and they say, in your name, if you go back and you look at the original, they're saying sos. Sos in Oma. Sos in Oma. Sos in Oma. In your authority. In your authority. In your. There was no. And even if it's the word name, authority, whatever, there is no. Didn't I do these works because we relationship we authority we co heir it's none of that. that's not what they're saying they're not saying that at all they're saying in your i tried to use your not our mm-hmm. there was no relationship there and so that's where you see this this break here in these people that are talking about but i did go out and i, I did ministry and i and i tried to make the world a better place and they don't, okay, but you did all these things. You had no salvation. You had no relationship here. This is, this is not how this works. And so I just want to leave, you know, with that parting thought. And you guys can go look that up and chew on that um, and see how that makes you feel. Um, so, yeah, that's what I have there. Do you have anything else you want to add? Uh, my wife on YouTube, I'm sorry, Roxanne on YouTube says, wow, Bill is in some hardcore denial about that emotional stuff. Because everybody who knows me knows I am super emotional, like, about <gasps> everything. Really? Yeah, like, when my when my friends have birthdays and they won't let me talk about it, it really gets me, like, right here, and it hurts. Remember, and I, I can press stop anyway. without you. I send them <laughs> gifts anyway, even though they tell me not to, and I'm like... Get over it. So that's all I have to say about that. And so now we'll do um, 30 second buffer, 30 second buffer, 30 second buffer. Was that a little bunny rabbit? It was. No, it wasn't. It, it was. 30 second it was buffer. It was a bunny rabbit. 30 second buffer, 30 second, second buffer. buffer. We love you. Have a great week. Please be safe. And until next time. I wanted to make kissy faces. I don't know why. I'm going to press stop now.